All right, at the end of the last video, I was starting to, to show you how to use the pen tool in vector.com. Incredibly useful because this is a freeware browser based that you can use <coughs> to make or edit vectors even if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, right? So making our own type design here, I'm going to make this C using the pen tool. So I'm going to start with the hard edges, just click, drag, with letting go, click. Now when I want to do a curve, I go to the middle of the curve that I'm hoping to make, and I click and drag to create that curve. Next, this is a little bit different. If I just continue and click, it won't give me control of that curve until later. So if I want to build it as I go, which I tend to like to do when I'm using Vector.com, hold down your command button or your control button on a PC and then click on the handle that's leading away from the anchor point. Drag that handle back to the anchor point and that would take you back to a straight. So even though I don't want to continue this curve with a straight, that gives me the option. But now I go to the end of my curve and then I click and drag and I can finish that curve out. And if I don't have enough room, just use your space bar to give yourself a little bit more space click and drag right now hold down command drag that handle back so i can go back to a straight let's do it right there oh no curve it back all right and then go to the center of my curve drag out the curve hold down command so my i just have my finger hovering over command I'm just using the mouse go just before my final because if I go to my final one right now then that will be a straight I have to later change so I'm going to go right before it drag or click and drag to get my resolving curve and then I am going to hold down command go back to here and now I use a straight to close the path now, right now, what you see is an empty path. It just has that little red indicator. I have to click it in order to see the properties. And I want to fill it with black, with the black color, and I want to turn off that, that stroke. doesn't matter what colors they are. You want your color to be solid black, and you want no stroke. So you just turn that off. Okay, now, to modify it, because you can see how my curves are a little pointed, I just double-click it, and then I can move that point around and I can also click on that anchor point and I can modify by holding down command each side of this curve until it really looks nice and even. Same thing here, hold down command, I can modify that curve or I can double click it, whoops, you can always do command Z double click it nope and that will change it from a curve to a straight what I want to do is drag out the other side so if I hold down shift I thought I could get the other angle but double click click on the anchor point I can play with this ah as soon as I start to play with it if I'm not holding down command it will even out the handle on both sides which is actually better because then it allows me to use command and modify it. So for type design, you want perfectly rational shapes, even if you're going for kind of a funky modern type like I'm doing. You want to be able to play with them, sometimes from multiple sides, like this, to get the shape you want. And now, how do I resolve this issue? Well, I just drag this anchor point to this one, and it will snap on top. Perfectly clean. Or I can resolve it a slightly different way, and I think I will, by doing a bit of a curve here. Drop this back using that cornering tool. Yeah, I actually don't like how that looks. I, I don't mind that. So that's a C. Trying to give myself the best option. I'm actually just going to keep it all straight. 
because I've got a plenty, plenty of curve in the body of it. All right, so that's a C. Now let me try it with a K. And of course, I can just click it once and get this transform box for it. And I can stretch it, and I can tilt it, and I can play with the space between the letters, and that's kerning. So a big part of this project is not to use the type tool just automatically. Because the type tool will give you vector shapes, but they won't give you full control of, of the space between, of the, the proportions, the shapes. So let's play with the, the text tool, the type tool within vector.com. So I can type something in just like a word processor, right? So I'm going to do capital N, lowercase i, capital C. Or let's try a K in this case. Do a lowercase K. Now, I can select all of that, and I'll have in the properties here the different typefaces. And I am limited to these typefaces unless I am able to add one, right? So for this project, we're going, you're allowed to use the type tool, but you're going to have to modify it somewhat. So what's nice is they show you what the typefaces look like. You can try them out. I can make it a lot bigger. These are called point sizes. Probably familiar with that from word processors. So let's try something like 400. Just big enough so I can really see it clearly. So that's an interesting K. I'm actually going to use this just to make my K. Nope, not that one. And sometimes there's some really cool ones in there that make nice vectors, but this doesn't always speed up your process. That's a good one for like kind of bubble letters. I want what are called modern a modern font design, which doesn't have any serifs or embellishments, and then I can always add my own. Yeah, that K is pretty close. I can always look up and try to figure out what's closest to the TikTok one as well. And I don't want you to get too stuck on trying to match a, a preconceived concept. Exactly. I want you to, just like in any creative process, be open to finding your own path. Huh. Yeah, so a lot of them are close to what I want. Nothing as thick. That one's probably the closest. All right, so if I take this, oops, I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I'm using red hot, red hat display. Now that is what's called a typeface. This is what's called a font. Fonts are modifications to typefaces that are built in. So bold is a modification of a typeface. What's great about using the type tool is I can just use the, the word processing aspect to it. And I don't know why it keeps disappearing. Oh, and now I know why. Or oh, I thought I did. Let's see. I want it to be black in color. Make sure it has enough space. I just want a lowercase k. All right. So once you've done that, you have this. But you notice you can't do all the things you would need to in order to modify it as a vector. In order to do that, and this is true in Illustrator as well, we need to do what's called outline the type. So I can flip it. I can you know, do different things with it. I keep losing it, which I don't love. That is annoying. So I'm just going to type it again. All right. And 
what we need to do is select it and then click on this button to outline the text. And now it is a vector shape that we can modify. So you are allowed to use type tools. You are allowed to use this text tool. You are allowed to use typefaces and font modifications and get close to what you want. But then you need to outline the text and then modify. So how am I going to do that? Well, with one click, I get to transform it, make it bigger, right? Let's not delete the T, but let's turn off the T, lock it, and turn it off. And now, by double-clicking, I get to modify these vectors. And well done type design is going to allow you to see those vector shapes very clearly, those anchor points very clearly. To make it look a little bit more like the TikTok K, I'm going to add an anchor point here, and then I'm going to drag this anchor point down. See that? And then to make it a little bit more like what I'm doing with my other type, I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to round this one out with that cornering tool. But I don't like that. I'm going to do Command Z and then maybe instead I just do that here. I don't love that. So you play around until it kind of feels like what you want. And you're going to see that blue line. That shows you when things are lined up. Maybe you want things lined up. Maybe you don't. So I think I want it more like this. Line it up and then take it back. Let's move it a little bit. And if you want more play, you just zoom in. All right, and then here, instead of rounding it out, I'm going to do a new anchor point. I'm going to drag that out, then I'm going to round that. Yeah. Do I want that little star element? Maybe so. Maybe I want to arrange all of these. I don't have them locked so I can move them. Play with the kerning, the spacing between. You see how this is a mirror image? Wider there, wider here, narrower here, narrower there. That's kind of good type spacing. And I want this to be pretty dynamic. So now I want to maybe push this lower and back while still keeping that strong angle. Do I like that better? Yes, I do. Then I can also play with expanding it here. All right. Now about the star, where would the star go? Well, why don't I just add a, a star and see? So I've been using this star or something similar to it, let's bring this one in, the five-pointed star. Let's rotate it. It's safe to play with this because it's all It is all overlapped right now. It's a, it's a, separate, a separate layer. There we go. All right now, if I want to merge those two together, I hold down Shift, I select them both, and then it gives me the Pathfinder options to merge them together. I'm going to close in the kerning a little bit, keep it nice and tight. Very nice. All right. So I am nearly done 
what I can do is click and hold down shift on all of them. And then if I want, 